decided to promote some uh, old areas of our region and uh, we chose four little medieval villages and uh, we went in two of these villages and made a kind of documentary but because of our cameras the quality is not really high so we tried to do what we could. Actually, use the pictures, the, the images, and then have subtitles, or maybe um, record the audio yes, again. The, uh, there are two videos of me. Yeah. Uh, mine in front of the church and hers mm. inside the church that is uh, re recorded. Because. Right, you should dub it again and maybe yeah. add some music because mm. the video is perfect, really. It's, uh, it's really well done. But the, yeah, you, you cannot hear anything. So you will have to tell us everything again. Okay. Oh, I mean, go on with what you were, you know, supposed to, to say and then uh, you tell us all the other information that were contained in that video that we didn't get. Well, here, here's the leaflet. Right. Yeah. 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 Fantastic pool. Okay, beautiful. Hi, hello. Ah. Okay, right, go ahead. I'm going so to listen I'm going to start with the point of family. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it is uh, going along uh, the ridge that leads from Colbordolo to Colpino. It is impossible not to admire this little medieval village called Monte uh -huh. uh, The origins of the name is uh, uncertain and it may uh, uh, come from Monte Fabrorum, which was the name of the castle of the family Fabri. Uh -huh. of the Fabri family. Um, it is better to enter the 12th century walls passing under the art that you saw in the video, uh, which uh, has on a uh, uh, 15th century Saint Madonna da Tante. Mm -hmm. Montefabri, together with the entire area of Colbordolo, provide um, uh, an exclusive virgin olive oil and a dog wine called. Colli Pesaresi, which is made from uh, Sangiovese and Monte Luciano grapes. And um, as you saw, it seems to have changed little from 1400. In fact, it still has uh, traces of uh, its uh, ancient characteristics, and that's why you can only overnight in uh, one place, which is a private house, and you can see it because it's, um, it is written Quisidorme. So here you can sleep, and it's the only uh, place in which you can overnight. But there are um, hotels um, in the nearer. And um, yeah, nowadays there are only 31 inhabitants, so there are very uh, few. And uh, when we were there, um, we asked uh, to. Have an inter to make an interview to someone and they were really um, sociable and we went to an um, 81 year old man's house and we asked him what he likes and what he dislikes of uh, Montefabri. He said that because he, because he is 81 years old he, he can't dislike because uh, it's too late to change. 
but he said that um, even if Montefabri was uh, um, located on the top of those little medieval villages in Italy, it is not true because uh, institutions don't um, care, uh, don't yeah, don't care about the architectural um, form, uh, architectural mm -hmm. film. And he he asked us to promote it and to ask institutions to oh, right. get uh, again to care about the yeah to get the funding basically yeah. to get the money to protect those places. Mm -hmm. He was uh, um, next, which is in Laco. Mm -hmm. Next, I don't know. Deputy mayor. Yeah. Vice mayor. Mm -hmm. Right. And did you? I mean, did you film it in the end? Yes, but there was uh, one of the video that. Uh, Possible to see because it was made with a phone and okay, okay, all right, okay. and it was in dialect. Okay, <laughs> yeah, all right, okay, thanks. Well, the next village is Coronado, owing to its proximity to the um, destroyed Roman uh, village of Suaza Senonu. Um, the village, according to tradition, its name uh, is um, refers to the, the cry. Renato, or run or flee uphill, shouted out by the survivors of um, the barbarous uh, violence. But it's more probable that uh, the name refers uh, also to uh, Collinato or uh, High Hill, or to uh, Curia di Alto, so Algis Curia, but uh, the latter um, will reveal also a Lombard origin of the name. Um, well, um, uh, Corinaldo is located in a strategic position between the march of uh, Ancona and the state of Urbino. And uh, the symbols of uh, the village are uh, its um, imposing and um, defense walls, which um, have remained intact uh, since uh, the, the 15th century. And this is a perfect set for a clock and dagger film. Uh, is the heart of uh, Corinaldo, which is Piaggia. It's a survey of uh, 100 steps toward which uh, um, the red brick houses converge in a herringbone cutter. Civic buildings, which are worthy of a visit, are um, uh, Palazzo Comunale, so the town hall, uh, which is a fine example of neoclassical architecture uh, with, a, um, with a gallery on Via del Corso and also the former convent of uh, Augustinians, uh, which was built uh, in the second part of the 18th century, but nowadays it's a hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, the Teatro Comunale, uh, which is a municipal, municipal theatre, uh, named, named like this after Carlo Gondoni, and um, at the end Casa del Trecento, or House of uh, the um, 1400, uh, which nowadays is the seat of uh, Proloco, so the local town promotion um, board. And in fact, it is the oldest uh, house of the village. In uh, Piazza San Pietro, which is um, uh, the central square, um, the, tel the bell tower is the oldest remains of uh, the church of the same name, because it was demolished in 1870, uh, because it was considered uh, in danger of collapsing. Uh, in, in its place stands a uh, Himalayan cedar, uh, which was supposed to be, placed, to be planted there by an anti-clerical, um, so that um, there, will, there won't be built another church. And in, um, on the highest point of uh, the village, uh, you can, from the highest point of the village, you can uh, admire, uh, like as Prince Charles of England did in 1987, the historic center of uh, historic center of uh, Corinaldo in the countryside, and on clear on clear days you can also admire Monte Conero. Um, concerning the products, in the vineyards of the famous Barbicchio, uh, which are um, placed on the hills uh, around around Corinaldo, uh, produce um, a wine with uh, a pale straw yellow uh, color and the dry harmonious flavor, which is excellent with um, fish, uh, yeah, fish-based dishes. But also uh, the red, um, the 
also be good in Alto, so a red wine is promising um, very good to be also awarded as a DOC status, a DOC status. And the area also produces extra virgin uh, olive oil, salami, sausages and also honey. And at, at the end there are some typical dishes as uh, passatelli in capon broth, um, vinches grassi, which is kind of uh, banked um, um, baked lasagna, uh, and uh, the roast goes um, stuffed with sage, rosemary and garlic. And accompanying with thick slice of roasted uh, potatoes, mm -hmm. and it's something that um, might not be missed uh, in the restaurants of Corinanto. Right. Did you um, did you go to the restaurants when uh, no. you were there? No, you didn't no. try the special uh, no, dishes. I, I've been there, um, I think once because I had some friends there, but mm -hmm. I never. Tried the session issues. Mm. No. Okay, what's the pizza? Yeah, I will like it. Okay, next one, thank you. Next, uh, Gradara. Mm -hmm. Gradara is a town in the province of Pesaro oh. and Urbino in, uh, in the region of Marche in central Italy. It, it is located 25 kilometers uh, from Rimini and uh, 13 kilometers from uh, Pesaro. Um, the name uh, um, comes from the Latin uh, Cretaria, which means uh, clay, um, of which much uh, of the geological formation of the territory is made. Less acceptable is the hypothesis of um, Grata Aria because of the cold breeze that um, you can feel when you are there. Um, uh, Gradara is uh, situated 142 uh, meters above the sea level and for that reason it is impossible uh, to smell the, um, the sea's salty odor. Um, Gradara uh, represents an extraordinary um, urban and architectural combination and it is um, characterized by a double line of medieval walls and uh, by a massive castle uh, that is one of the best perceived in Italy. It is famous, it, um, it is famous because it, it was the location of the episode of Paolo and Francesca described by Dante Alighieri in the fifth canto of his Inferno. Uh, the Gradara Castle is protected by uh, two walls, uh, and uh, it, it is um, very important. It is the castle is one. The castle is one of the most visited monuments in the region, and for that reason, there are lots of events of musical and artistic events. In Gradara, uh, there are lots of um, pictures and uh, frescoes, but the most important work is uh, um, a terracotta altar piece um, done by Andrea della Robbia that is inside the Castle Chapel. Um, uh, lovers who stroll uh, in the, um, along the street, especially in, uh, at night, live uh, in a romantic, unique frame in which love, poetry and history uh, melt with a wonderful landscape. Um, Gradara offers uh, as well uh, good food and uh, wines. Um, in fact, uh, you can try Sangiovese, that is one typical wines from Gradara, and the first class uh, meat uh, coming from uh, um, market. Mm -hmm. um, all the restaurants um, offer uh, lots of different uh, specialties uh, coming from the two neighboring uh, regions, Romagna and Marche. One typical dish is uh, pastatelli that have a, a delicate flavor and they are made with uh, bread, um, grated parmesan cheese, lemon peel and nutmeg. If you want to go to Gradara, you can't uh, um, miss the appointment uh, with uh, the uh, Middle Ages at table. Uh, in uh, these days, all the restaurants inside the castle are equipped like uh, 14 century inns, and uh, it is really a jump in the bus life. Do you, do you know when it is? Oh, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> oh, oh, what is it? I, I think it's summer. I mean, it must be in summer sometime. I don't really know. Okay, quite very interesting. Thank you. Have you finished? Yes. The last one. <coughs>
the last one is of Anya, that is in the province of Ancona. And the name of Anya had various interpretation, but the most common makes it to, to descend from a corruption of Massa Franiana, that was a large landed estate uh, of Gensa Frania during the Roman period. But the uh, Afrania family was an illustrious lineage of the territory and had many estates in the territory of Afrania. Uh, isolated castles for strategic military purposes were very uncommon in the, in the region of market during the early Middle Ages. And uh, these kind of buildings were built um, in order to strengthen and um, protect the settlements. And um, so the simple shape and uh, small size Castello Mafrania was built in the region um, near Massa Franiana, that was the rural and, econ the rural and economic center. Uh, Ofania nowadays, so like an uh, ancient medieval castle, there's a wall that goes up a uh, very steel hill and until it reaches the heart of the town, that is the Rocca. And the Rocca was built between 1454-1455 by the people of Ancona in order to defend the um, position, so the position over the surrounding territory, territories. And the Rocca represents a significant example of military, uh, military architecture of the period between the Middle Age and the Renaissance. And uh, inside the Rocca nowadays, there is an exhibition of ancient weapons, but also art exhibitions that are temporarily held there. And walking through Ofania is uh, like taking a journey through the time, because narrow streets and downtown homes and the crenolated towers still possess the enchanting and almost table-like atmosphere of centuries ago. And in particular, these unique, these unique aspects are revived during the summertime celebrations, something like Radara. And uh, during this, during this uh, celebration, the entire town interprets the old medieval ways uh, they lived and they acted. And um, so a curiosity about Fania is that there is a mount, um, a mount near Fania, Mount Crescia, and it's said that in Mount Crescia, um, a treasure which consists in a, chi, in a golden chi and, and a go, in his cheeks was hidden there. And uh, according to the legend, there is a ghost that is in charge of uh, safeguarding this treasure. Uh, concerning the products of the, of the city of Ofania, there is even in, also in uh, Ofania there is a wine, Rosso Codero. And, uh, but there is also M, Chamuscolo Salami, sausages, and uh, extra virgin olive oil. But, there are also some products, not uh, food, but also um, essential oils and natural cosmetics mm -hmm. that are made there. Uh, yes, made there. Uh -huh. Okay, very interesting. Right. Um, listen, if you had a group of uh, people coming from the UK or from the USA and uh, they wanted to go on this tour, okay, they, they go to buy this tour, so uh, the fantastic for. Uh, itinerary, right? So to discover these four places, right? Uh, how would you how would you organize it? How would you, um, for example, how many days do you need to see these four places? What type of accommodation would you um, find for them? Um, and um, yeah, I mean, basically, how many days and what accommodation would you organize? I think a couple of days, maybe. Oh, no. fine, fine, yeah. Our, for, mm. for fun. Yeah. Mm. Uh, for one day, five, we're going to one day each. Yeah, maybe one day, half an hour. Yes. Yeah, and then maybe a morning. Yeah, 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 okay, I mean, to, to see the centre or to see the sites, maybe yeah. you, you need mean, half a day, right? But then you can do some other things. Uh, what, what can you do? I would, I would suggest uh, we because you can come to to the sea to the beach uh -huh. and then you can visit what Monte Fabri you can visit it in half an hour. Right. Then you can go to Granara which has a castle. So if you want to visit it, you need one day. You can eat there. You can stay there for uh, the evening and mm -hmm. enjoy the landscape. Then I think also Corinaldo and Fania are bigger than the Fabric, so you need at least one day. But if you consider also the transfer, you, you need um, a week because 
because they, they are they are so close uh, to each other. So right, right. you you need to. Would you suggest uh, Would you suggest the tourists uh, rent a car or use a new? Yeah, yes. because parking is easy to find. To be found. And uh, yeah, maybe when they go to Monte Fabri, because it is there. They can go also to Vienna, which is right, right, of course, which is a must. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. What's about accommodation? What do you think? In uh, Mont uh, Montefabri, there was just one place where they could. Uh, I, I would make. I would suggest them to stay in Pisa and then move. Okay. Because here they have the beach and they can choose. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, then. Very well done.